Conservation Ag Update is brought to you by Cultivase. Hey, welcome to Conservation Ag Update. Noah Newman here. We are halfway home for harvest 2024. Corn is about 50% done. Soybeans are at 67% according to the latest USDA crop progress report. Right now, let's talk about the phantom yield loss phenomenon. Some of you might be dealing with that right now. It's the loss of potential corn yields when some parts of a field are harvested later than other parts. And our Conservation Ag Operator fellow Ray McCormick found a way to avoid phantom yield loss on his southern Indiana farm. Take a listen. So I believe phantom yield loss comes from deteriorating kernels on the ear. And uh, so we picked a lot of really wet corn last year and it was a struggle because we have to hold all of our corn on a buyer's call. So we're just today, actually today, September 4th, hauling off our last load of last year's corn. So we have to hold it in the bin a long time. So when you're picking very wet corn, you're putting it in the bin, even running it through the dryer, you're getting a lot more cracking up with the combine, a lot more cracking up going through the dryer, trying to reduce that much moisture out of it. But we've never had yields like we had last year. Probably won't this year, but last year we just broke all the records on our farm on field after field after field, and we were picking it wet. We got an old dryer, that's not easy to do, but Farmers may want to look into not letting it dry too much in the field and picking some wetter corn and trying it themselves and see if they can't boost yields by picking the corn wet whether it versus 17 or 18. Good stuff there from Ray. Let's go from Vincennes, Indiana up to Williamsport, Indiana, where fellow no-till innovator Rick Clark has reached what some consider the holy grail. His 7,000 acres are 100% no-till, 100% organic, and 100% free of synthetic nutrients herbicides, pesticides, and fungicides. Clark gives us a look at what a soil looks like on a late fall day. We've put wheat in this field, and this, this field is also going to be part of an ongoing experiment where we're going to come back before the ground freezes, and we're going to plant yellow field peas that are cold tolerant. And then next spring or early summer, we will harvest the wheat and the peas together, and then separate them. I think this is the future of what we're going to be doing more and more of on this farm. So let's go ahead and let's just get a, I mean, look how easy that, that goes in. And I just look at, I mean, the first thing right off the bat, earthworm, right there he is. So it's just amazing what kind of soil health, we're, there's two of them. And this is almost November now. And we still have these, this kind of activity. Now, here's what I'm talking about on this aggregate stability. Look at all of, of how this soil is. Look at the, there's the holes of the earthworms. It just breaks apart in your hands. It's like black cottage cheese. This is exactly what we want. There's, a, there's another worm. There's five more worms. I mean, this is what it's all about right here. Clark says he saves about $2 million on inputs per year. You could ask him all about it during a classroom session at the 2025 National No-Tillage Conference in Louisville, Kentucky. The program is out. You can head to notillconference.com to check it out and reserve your spot today. And we'll have a special preview from one of the speakers later in the show. Right now, let's check in with our good friend McCain Vogel for today's Cover Crop Connection. McCain. Thanks, Noah. McCain Vogel here with this week's Cover Crop Connection. No-till legend Steve Groff says regenerative agriculture allows him to have fun with cover crop mixes and build soil health at the same time. Here's Groff waist deep in his cover crop field to tell you a little bit more about his cover crop mix of hairy vetch and black oats and about his regenerative ag philosophy. I kind of like to grow mixes, actually grow mixes, because you can separate the seeds. Uh, the nice thing about growing mixes is, in this case here, this provides nitrogen for the in this case, the grain to grow. So I don't need to add nitrogen. Uh, so that's its cost savings there. And, um, you know, sometimes we'll have some from um, some oil seed rape mixed in. Kind of the problem with that, though, is it matures a little sooner and some of the seed starts falling out before we are able to harvest because it's kind of known to shatter. So but that's one thing I've been working with. We'll mix some triticale in with this as well in some fields. I have a field up there that has some triticale mixed in it. So, you know, I, the, the nice thing is when you're getting in like 
I'll just say regenerative agriculture. It's just nice not to be tied into like one method of growing stuff. It's like, okay, you know, what's growing well in this field this year? What can I plant this year? So all those things come into mind. And again, lower costs. I mean, I don't really get anything into this stuff. I grow my own seed. And so there's very little seed cost. You know, when, when you grow mixes like this, you don't need, generally, you don't need herbicide. I don't need fertilizer. So it's kind of it's kind of a fun way to farm, but you kind of have to be into that flexibility. I mean, if you want a cookie cutter way to farm, it's not for you. Uh, so I, I don't know. A lot of people say, Regenerative agriculture makes farming fun again, and I think that to me is what's what is the fun part about it. Uh, so uh, that's the space where I enjoy uh, being, and um, that's the way I roll. Well, there's always lots to learn from a cover crop expert like Steve Groff. And as always, if you'd like to hear more cover crop tips, head to CoverCropStrategies.com for the latest news, notes, videos, podcasts, and all things cover crops. Well, that's all for this week's Cover Crop Connection. Until next time, back to you, Noah. Good stuff as always. Thank you very much, McCain. Let's go ahead of the curve now with Donaldson, Iowa strip tiller Mark Dobson. He's using the 360 Rain Autonomous Irrigation and Nutrient Application System for the first time in his organic operation. And guess what he tells us? He's thinking about using it for cover crops next year. So I'm doing part of my nutrients with it now, so that kind of changes my organic world. And I think in the future, I will be able to seed cover crops with it during the season. So... All my crops will have something growing when I'm done. I did not get mine into the field till late this year. So I did not get to run it all season, um, but I did get to make some manure passes on my organic corn. And it's kind of incredible to be able to have access to your field from the time you plant it till harvest with um, not just water, but nutrients. It's going to make the research part of me, uh, my head spin, because there's so many different things that I want to try and <laughs> and do with that that I don't, you know, I don't know where the, where the end of that is or isn't. Interesting stuff there. And now to our video of the week. This one comes to us from Carl Clark on TikTok. The Central Illinoisan planted soybeans into five-foot-tall ryegrass before terminating it with Roundup. No residuals, no post-emergence applications. Now, the beans were hard to cut, and he had some water hemp pressure. So Carl thought maybe he made a massive mistake by doing this, but let's see what the yield monitor says. Our yields this year have been ranging anywhere between about low, low 60s up to mid 80s. And uh, this might actually be my best looking field as we go along. So. I tell you what, I am kind of, uh, kind of impressed. I, I normally like to move pretty quick, uh, and I don't like the density. I have to run my, my head back a little bit further than I like, and I hate dealing with lodge crops, but there might be something this cover crop. Boy, I need to really clean my window. Sorry. But this actually looks pretty decent. It's kind of a mess. Uh, this has already been planted to a new cover. We've we've got uh, we had an airplane come in and do uh, oats and radishes uh, to go into our corn crop for next year. And if you have a video or story you'd like to see on the program, shoot me an email at innewman at lessermedia.com. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to see you in a couple weeks. But before we go, let's send it out to Marion Calmer in Alpha, Illinois, for a preview of his 2025 National No Tillage Conference presentation. Hi, my name is Marion Calmer, and. Uh, I'm excited uh, this year. I get to speak again at the National No-Till Conference. Uh, that'll be down in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, uh, January 7th through the 10th. And my topic this year is what I've learned in 40 years of independent on-farm research. It seems like it's gone by in a hurry, but I'm excited to get to share it with you. And we're going to talk about uh, uh, the subjects of... Uh, Row spacing, uh, nitrogen applications, uh, populations. Uh, obviously, we're going to talk about no-till uh, versus strip-till uh, versus conventional tillage. And uh, we're also going to talk about uh, the kind of strip-till bars that, that people are using, like the one that's uh, behind me, and how deep should we be putting that uh, fertilizer in the strip? And of course, I'm also going to 
take you through the learning curve that I uh, have on stratification, which is a very rich layer of fertilizer that has accumulated over years and years of surface application of phosphorus and potassium. So uh, those are a few of the topics uh, that we're going to discuss. And I look forward to seeing you uh, this coming January in Louisville, Kentucky. Have a great day.